Hey guys, Alpha here, and I'm going to show you guys how to make this. It's just a really simple engine. I was going to use it for a game that I was going to make, but I ended up not working on it because I just lost interest in it. So now I'm just going to give it to you guys for free as an engine. Um, I'm not going to charge you for it, obviously. It's you guys can just have it. It it is compatible for Game Maker Eight and Game Maker Studio. So if you wanted to turn this into an app, you could definitely do that. Um I'm pretty sure this is completely compatible for Game Maker Studio because I did not put any audio in it. I usually use Super Sound, but that's not compatible for Studio, I don't believe. So this is just the basic battle system. You have a looping UI, and you have a working stat system with health and experience. I'm going to show you guys exactly how this works. Well, not exactly, because it's pretty complicated. Because I did program it to work for just the engine itself for the game, but there are green notes all over the place that tell you exactly how everything works. And I usually do that with my more complicated games, so that way I know and remember how things work in my game, but here's all the green notes. They will tell you exactly what you need to know. This is the most important set of code in this game. Don't pay attention to all the other bodies below, it's just copy and pasted. Um, it looks like a lot of variables, but it's actually not. It's a single variable with arrays, which actually stores less memory. And then you have the Pokédex, PKDX, and you have these. It's just green notes. It tells you exactly the, all the indexes of the arrays. And now we have the arrays and the global variables for Pokémon. Global.PKMN. And then in the array, we have 22 and the Pokémon's number. Here, we have the camera that just controls where the view is, follows the player. We have the player. Very, very basic. We have this script down here that controls the way the world is generated for colliders. You'll see why that's necessary. Here. Obstacle index for collision. Set all instances to room center with current X and Y. Now this is where things get a little bit more complicated. This does not actually control anything, it just pops to the collider. Here, this is the actual movement that moves towards the box. The box pops up 16 pixels and the player will animate and move towards that box. Here, you just press T to go to the room battle, it was just for testing. Now, here it is, there's only two objects in it, and here, there's only two, ob two not, um, more than two objects, but two control objects. Um, actually going to have to show you guys how the wild Pokemon are actually created in the game. Here, we have the same stuff, basically. It's just the same formula, copy and pasted and changed. Here, BSEQ means battle sequence, and this is going to control everything going on in the battle. I know this looks really complicated, and it is, <laughs> but this engine is not for people that don't know how to use Game Maker or program. It's on an advanced level, so if you just started using Game Maker, you probably don't want to use this, but... Um, most of the work has been done for you, and I'm pretty sure you could probably figure it out, even if you only have, like, two years of experience. I have 11, so, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about this, just DM me, and I can answer any of them. I'm just showing you guys all the indexes, it's just copy and pasted, and the array was changed. PB means Pokemon Battle, and Par 0 means Party Position 0. 
and the array stores the position, and the second stores the data that belongs in that position. And that's basically how the opponent works, too. I'm not going to over-explain it, because it would just be too complicated. You guys can just download the engine and just read the green notes. It'll tell you everything you need to know. And, uh, yeah. Um, this is where things get a little bit more complicated, where the constants control all the systems and the Pokemon battle engine. This is going to start your battle, where the trainers slide across the screen. And here, we control the fainting of the opponent, because the opponent needs a specific sprite for that, a white box underneath them so they can fall down. Here, we don't have any of that because the player Pokemon just falls underneath the text box. Which is B mess. Now all this crap down here, <laughs> this is all the complicated stuff. Um, you're really probably going to have to just look at it yourself, but it's pretty much the same formula as before. Same thing. Here, begin step operates first, obviously. Here, we define positioning and defined, well, we define the position of the attack for the Pokemon battle position array and all the stats for that attack and exactly where it goes. Same goes for the opponent. This is just a simple animator that when it ends, it executes something in battle sequence that tells the Pokemon to draw. Yeah, this is just... Um, a checker that controls whether or not the Pokemon's fainted or not. Standby 4 starts battle. BICQ.standby array value 0 set to 4. That's going to start the battle. Like I said, you guys are just going to have to monkey around with it for a little while because... It's not simple, and I mean, programming something like this in Game Maker is extremely complicated. It took me like six years just to figure it out, but anyway, um, the rest of this is just controlling the messages. It's too complicated to explain in this video. You're going to have to just DM me or, or something about it. This is just the message box. It gets the strings, displays them, you know, where it says, uh, opponent Pikachu fainted, you know, that stuff. And here, we just have the database for wild Pokemon. Object underscore 22 capital W means wild Pikachu, obviously. I'm going to open this up in a second and show you how it works. I mean, roughly. It's just a create, and it just stores all of the party position values and its stats from the Pokedex reference from the global variable arrays. So the Pokemon will calculate their stats by themselves from stats that I got online, so the game feels like an actual Pokemon game. Here's just GUI. Nothing complicated at all. Not, I mean, I don't think it is. So, just simple stuff that pops up on the screen when the player hits, uh, taps the escape key. You hold the escape key down to close the game and tap it to open and close your menus. Here, we actually have to, uh, this object here, when you put a wild Pokemon in the room, or when a wild Pokemon appears, it has to be put in the previous room first so the global variables can register in the system. Thanks for watching, and I will put the link in the description for the download, and you guys have a great one.